Good morning, my name is Francisco Rivera, agricultural agent from Hillsborough County. Today we are going to talk about an important topic with Dr. Santoya. We are going to talk about what is the tick burn and why does happen. Good morning, Dr. Santoya. Well, good morning, Francisco and Janaela. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here uh, again in, in your program, and this is a great initiative. And today I'm going to talk about uh, tick burn in lettuce which is one of those uh, disorders that happens in all lettuce production areas. As you can see here in these pictures, we have a lettuce in the fields, like whole head lettuce or baby leaf lettuce, or the new tendency that is to produce uh, lettuce in protected structures, like in, in aquaponic, like in this case of this picture. So I'm an assistant professor in breeding and genetics, and I work in lettuce for the University of Florida IFAS. I'm based at the Everglades Research and Education Center. And tick borne is one of those disorders that happens because there are many factors involved in uh, the development of these disorders. The pictures here, as you can see, um, in iceberg lettuce is not easy to see from the outside because the tick borne happens in the inside. This is the beginning of tick borne. This is how it starts uh, start showing up uh, in the lettuce plant and then becomes these uh, foreign uh, structures that happens in, in the lettuce head. All types of lettuce are, uh, have the same problem for tick burn. The example here is a romaine lettuce that is overgrown and has tick burn. Besides that, it also went to bolt, which is not really a desirable trait for the industry. So, uh, Herman, uh, we were talking earlier and. A lot of people confuse calcium deficiency with tick burn. And in tomatoes, for example, I, I, I see that, you know, a calcium deficiency causes uh, blossom end rot. Um, in, 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 in the case of lettuce, tick burn, uh, is it really caused by calcium deficiency? Well, calcium deficiency is one of the the, 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 the problems why tick shows up, but it's not just because a lettuce plant doesn't have calcium doesn't mean that it's going to show tick mm -hmm. There are many different factors that happens when uh, the disorder shows up in a lettuce crop. This is one of the, um, in this uh, slide here, I have uh, the factors that influence the presence of tick right? Mm -hmm. Cultivar is one of those. Uh, basically there is a difference in genetics there are lettuces that are susceptible to tick burn naturally and there are lettuces that are tolerant to tick burn naturally the example here is not actually a cultivated lettuce it's a wild type it's uh, what we call uh lactuca cereola that has tick burn and, and you can see it's, it's related to lettuce but it's no lettuce so we had a variety of plants lettuce plants that show tick burn and do not show tick burn. That's one of the first factors to consider. And the second one is environment. It's mm -hmm. not being genetically selected for production, right? So it's so you're, you're using or you're implying that genetically uh, lettuce comes with with this issue, right? That's right. So there are genes in that lettuce that produce the tick burn, and and some lettuces that uh, does not manifest those genes um, and therefore they are tolerant. So there's, there's the that's the first factor that you need to uh, think when you're talking about tick burn is the genetics of the cultivars. Some cultivars are tolerant or cultivars are not, right? And that's actually uh, my job at the University of Florida is to improve that lettuce for problems that growers have. And one of those is tick burn, in fact. But the environment can influence tick burn as well, right? So it's been seen that uh, warmer environments, like the ones we have in Florida, especially the ones we had in Florida, Southern California, and Arizona, promotes tick burn. Uh, tick burn is more present when the, the temperatures go higher, and therefore we definitely going to have some tick burn. So and that's one of the problems that we have, one of the factors that influence tick burn. The other one is, as you mentioned, was nutrient deficiency, and that has to do with calcium. Even though the problem is not really well understood, uh, how the, um, at the physiological level, there are many theories why this happens. Nobody really knows for sure why is this is a problem, because 
when you when you think about the fields, uh, growers provide macro and micronutrients, and including you know calcium when they have to, and they still have the problem. So um, that's the other factor why it happens. So Dr. Sandoya, I'm looking in in that picture, and I see some leaves that are yellow. That is the sign of tip burn, or the tip burn is when the the leaf, the edge of the leaf are black. Yeah, so uh, in fact, as you can see here, where I'm pointing out right now, that's tick burn. The fact that these um, leaves here are yellow is just because they are younger. It doesn't mean they're going to get tick burn. But usually, tick burn starts from the, uh, from the inside out, right? And that's why in the, in the previous slide, as you can see here, uh, all these iceberg letters, probably we didn't see any tick burn in the outside. But when we open it, we see the tick burn. So this is a very, very young leaf, uh, iceberg lettuce that had tick burn. So, so the newer leaves are gonna uh, are gonna be the ones that develop the the visual symptoms first. It really depends. It really depends because um, that also depends on the type of lettuce we're talking about. So in romaine lettuce is because they are more open. You can see it from the outside as well. But for the most part, everything starts in the middle of the plant and then moves around. But the problem with iceberg, you don't see it like that because it's a different type of plant. You see the head is all compact and you're not able to um, see what I'm talking about. So I'm pretty sure that you have seen in some romaine lettuce or butter lettuce or Latin lettuce that you see right in the middle is where everything starts. You'll see a picture later on my presentation that I'm going to show you. Um, I, Dr. Sandoya, how this affect to the producers in terms of production? How the tick burn affect? So basically what tick burn does is to uh, diminish the quality of lettuce. Something like that in the market is not desir desirable. So people will not buy that lettuce. And if for whatever reason you send um, iceberg lettuce to um, a facility, a salt pack, and they discover that it has tick burn, they reject that load. So it, it's really a problem for them. Or is the grower, for example, we're talking about romaine lettuce, and the grower see that the whole field is infected with tick burn. I should not say infected. It has the presence of tick burn. Uh, they do not simply harvest that, and they lose that, uh, that harvest. Yeah, we were talking earlier about the taste. Uh, uh, there's a bitter taste associated with tick burn as well, and that's a, a, a dependent on on variety. I I did uh, a variety. Uh, I I planted eight different uh, types of lettuce um, about two months ago, about a month and a half ago, and um, some of them uh, showed symptoms and some of them did not show symptoms. Uh, some of them were bitter, and some of them were not, depending on that variety. Uh, but um, in, in hydroponic uh, systems, we can, we can manage nutrients and kind of uh, control the, in some of the environmental factors a little better than what, what we can do uh, in, you know, when we plant in plastic culture or directly in the soil. Yeah, that's right. Um, that's the, the one of the advantages of doing hydroponics or protected structures because you have more control on the environment. Mm -hmm. You could modify that. Um, in fact, um, there are some researchers uh, trying to investigate how to diminish, besides using uh, you know calcium as a as a as a way to minimize the presence of tick burn. They are using so many different other components in a greenhouse operation. In fuel, it's a lot more complicated. So you mentioned there's one of the flavors between uh, um, lettuces. One is, is a cultivar thing. You know, some cultivars taste different than others. Like iceberg is more watery than romaine and butterheads. There are actually preferences um, on the type of lettuce people want to consume these days. In fact, you know, as we look at back in the 20s, most of the production in the U.S. was uh, iceberg lettuce. And these days, this has decreased a lot. We have more romaine lettuces and more butterhead lettuces that 
somehow is something between 35-40% iceberg, 35 romaine, then the rest is leaf lettuce and niche type of lettuces. And this is because consumer preference has changed, right? Mm -hmm. The fact that some lettuces in, in your experiment taste different is they have deeper, whether they have deeper or not, I don't really know what will be the cause of this, but it might be, maybe it's the variety. What we can yeah. do for avoid the tip bearing our lettuce cultivars? Yeah, that's in fact one. That's my next slide that I have here is a recommendations like what you can do. Uh, one of those is to plant tick burn tolerant cultivars. So make sure that the cultivars you're planting in your operation are tick burn tolerant, right? Um, you have to taste to test that in order to know sometimes. Uh, uh, you know, the label can tell you, but they might not be uh, right for your environment because uh, most likely those are not improved for the Florida environment. In this case, they are improved for some other places and they are brought here and they don't do well, right? Uh, plant heat tolerance cultivars is also uh, another way that I see uh, indirectly uh, to have less tick burn because as, as I said before, we had seen a uh, close relationship between tolerant cultivars, the cultivars are able to produce well in the heat, in the warmer environments, but at the same time, uh, they have less tick burn. So there's a relationship there. So tick burn is one of those complicated disorders that have many different factors, and, and, and you have to have some sort of integrated management plan for that. The other one is to develop an efficient fertilization, fertilization program that includes, you know, calcium, because there is some true about that. Calcium uh, influence the presence of deeper or not. You know, you know, as you start adding tolerant cultivars plus a good fertilization program, and then in the case of greenhouse plant plant um, lettuce, and in the case of hydroponics or aquaponics, you have to provide the right conditions for crop development, right? Some of those is temperature, so you can use um, coolers to cool down your greenhouse, but that recommendation has to do with the economics of the crop because sometimes it's too expensive to do that. Um, you can provide ventilation to those. So there's many, many universities in the U.S., so in IUF, the other ones in the south of the United States where they are um, investigating on different directions and different types of ventilation to diminish the presence of tick burn in the crop. Because as, as I mentioned before, it has to do something with the heat, but it also has to do something with the, with the, with the calcium deficiency. And so um, uh, regarding genetics, I, I, we've been working with you on evaluating some of the, uh, of the lines that you're, that you're developing in uh, in uh, in your lab, and uh, you know, I I've planted them several times, and I've seen that they actually outperform uh, the typical uh, some of the typical varieties. Uh, they they last uh, they outlast some of these uh, commercial uh, ones that that we can order through the mail, um, and they actually taste better when uh, they show less. Uh, tip burn than the that the average rice that we're testing against. So I just I just wanna I just wanna mention that that at UF uh, you are making you are making a difference with the rice that you're developing. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned before, my job here is to develop cultivars for Florida production that includes not just field uh, other operations as well. And um, our cultivars and limes are adapted to our conditions. You know, the work has been conducted here for so many years. And, and the reason why you don't find, for example, the example here is actually <clears throat> one of those cases. Um, the intention of this slide is to show you uh, the differences between tick burning other diseases and disorders. But in fact, I can tell you one more thing uh, is the cultivars on the left side, on the right side, is the one is the same one, and it came from California, from Southern California, Arizona, and it doesn't do well, and it was hundred percent tick burn. It's bolted because, as you can see, there is a stem in here. It's no good anymore. The experiment was conducted for 
to identify heat tolerance in lettuce. The lettuce right here planted at the same time is a lettuce from Florida, even though um, the picture has another disease that is not tick -borne. You see that the plant is not bolted yet, so it's more tolerant to the heat, it's more adapted to our conditions. So, but the slide here, as I mentioned before, is made with intention to show that there are other diseases and disorders that might look like tick -borne, but they are not tick -borne. And one of those is dieback, and um, right in the middle, you can see tick-borne. Tick -borne is something that starts in, in, at the edge of the, of the leaf of the lettuce, that the difference is the dieback that is everywhere. So you have to be careful to, uh, when you identify these diseases, you can always uh, ask your extension specialist or the statewide specialist like me. That's the reason why there's my email, my phone number, and you can also follow us on Twitter to, uh, to know more of the, the work that we are conducting here at the UF IFAS Letters Breeding Program. That's why they hire you, right? <laughs> Correct. Um, Dr. Sandoya, I have some um, cultivar lines here, and I'm comparing with the first trials that we did in, in my office. And for some reason, I have the temperature control in my office, but the performance of the of the lettuce right now is a lot better outside. Is they are in shade with? Uh, I'm I'm using indoor um, grow lights. Uh, I'm using grow lights. So what is happening is that um, the lettuce size is a lot bigger. If I compare with the cultivar inside my office with the temperature control. So I don't know what could happen there. It's well, your office probably is too, too cold for lettuce. Lettuce is across the lights. Not to have, not to cold weather. So probably in your office, if you had too much AC, there, that might be the problem, too much AC. Also lights, our lettuces are not adapted to uh, the winters in, I mean, sorry, the summers in, in Northern United States where they have 16 hours light during the day or 14 hours light during the day. I think um, I'm, I haven't done an experiment like this yet and I'm really curious to, to do it, you know, with uh, supplemental light where we can put lettuces, our lettuces at different uh, times. The maximum day, I think we can provide light here is 10 hours, like in our, in our winter time. And I don't know what will happen when you go 12 hours, 14 hours, 16 hours. Probably that lettuce will bolt faster, or you know, because it's not adapted to those conditions. So that's something that is called uh, sensitivity to photo period. And lettuce is one of the species very sensitive to photo period. That's the reason why when you bring or you buy something from that it has been developed for other areas, especially from the northern United States or California, it's not adapted to our conditions. So we had to make we had to take one step backwards and adapt that material to our conditions. Meaning is like we will plant and hopefully there is a mutation in the group of plants that doesn't bolt in this case and we can select it and, you know, adapt it to here. And that's how lettuce was adapted to Florida, because lettuce is not native to Florida. Dr. Sandoya, thank you for your time, for explaining us what are the effects of the tip bearing the lettuce. Um, I hope that you can come again um, to talk about other interesting topics about lettuce issues, disease, and other um problems um so thank you for being with us today we really appreciate that you take from your time to teach all of us about this challenge that people have in their in their farm and in their house producing lettuce thank you francisco and you know, for uh, uh, having this program i think is very useful for the community producing in social distancing time especially now where we face a pandemic and, and, and we realize that food is an important factor. Many, um, you know, in-house growers or people can become growers in-house and do this using 
like a small uh, hydroponics or any maybe in bags or in your farm I mean in your backyard you can produce any vegetables thank you remember that there's an extension office near you we have a an extension office in every county in Florida and if you cannot find the information that you're looking for uh, by your extension office your extension agent is going to contact a specialist such as uh, Herman or other specialists in a subject matter area uh, to answer those questions uh, so just give us a, a find us in Google or or uh, shoot us an email and we'll, we'll help you solve those problems that you that you're looking at uh, in, in, in your situation. That's it. See you later. Bye.